If you want a fast, fun, hands-on art journaling activity that you can do to really boost your self-esteem, tap into your authentic identity, and just like celebrate the badass that you are, you're in the right place because that's exactly what we're doing today. Today is all about self-acceptance, self-love, and really tapping into your authentic identity. We're gonna like brush all the crud off of us. We're gonna get rid of the spider webs and the cobwebs and all the old things that no longer feel true and right for us. And we're gonna take a minute to self-reflect and look at who we are today, why that's amazing, and we're gonna create an amazing piece of artwork that celebrates the uniqueness that is you. You need a lot of things, but you don't need anything specific. I got my art cart here that is just full of stuff and you're gonna use most of it. So grab everything. I have used washi tape and some funky little metallic duct tape. I have old pieces of art that I've made that kind of get repurposed in this process. I have lots of craft paper, things with patterns, pictures, you're gonna need all of your art materials essentially. So grab your markers, grab your pens, grab your paint brushes because this is about tapping into you and your identity and what you like. So there's gonna be an element in this where you get to just go wild. But there is one thing that you do need, okay? So I'm giving you a lot of freedom but I'm also giving you a little bit of restrictions. You need some magazines, okay? You either need magazines or books, something with the written word on it that you're comfortable cutting up because we're going to combine elements. We're going to combine text with visual elements to make something really unique that is like a self-portrait of you through an abstract lens. So it's not actually going to be a picture of yourself, but it is going to be a reflection of who you are. So grab your materials, head to the table, and let's get going. Welcome to this art journaling activity for self-love and we are talking about identity today and I want you to ask yourself who are you and I want you to ask yourself when was the last time you asked yourself that question you see we pick up a lot of roles over the course of our lives we might be a friend or a sister a mother an aunt a teacher a leader but there also comes labels, and sometimes these labels are helpful, and sometimes they're harmful. We may consider ourselves smart or witty, brave, scared, shameless, bossy, arrogant, all sorts of things. And what about the labels that others have applied to us? Perhaps without our consent. Labels and names that were given to us by our parents, by bosses, partners, childhood friends, teachers. Maybe we were quiet or easily distractible or shy. Maybe you needed constant reminders, can't sit still. What are these labels that other people placed upon you? The other question to consider is, what about the labels that you used to love, but they don't fit anymore, right? Like there used to be labels that once filled you with pride and confidence and power. Things that really rooted yourself in a sense of like, yes, this is me. But they've become old and worn over time, like a sweater that you used to love so much and it's just stretched out like two sizes too big now. What was once comfortable now becomes a mask that you can hide behind. Maybe you used to be a writer or you were a runner. Maybe you loved collecting teapots or like whatever. You know, we all have these labels that used to be us and they no longer fit. I'm thinking about like holidays or birthdays when like you're the person who loves owls and someone buys you, you know, everybody buys you something with an owl on it and you're like, eh, I love owls. But maybe you don't love owls anymore, right? It's not who you are now, but it's still how you show up sometimes or how other people see you because that's what they expect of you. And in a way you expect that of yourself at times. 
So this month is all about love, right? It's being recorded in February. You may not be listening or watching this in February, but we're talking about love because of Valentine's Day in February. It's love, 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 love. It's like legit everywhere. And there's always two sides to this, I find, when we're in this February state. There's things thrown at you about like the traditional love relationships and then the other side of the coin is like the self-love self-love gets thrown in our faces all around right it's content everywhere and it's about empowerment and loving yourself but it's always from this perspective of like you don't need a partner you can love yourself if you're single it's okay to love yourself when you're not married or when you're not partnered up and it becomes this like single person's antidote to what is supposed to be for them a challenging holiday and i will even argue that this self-love and empowerment content that sort of gets shoved down our throats at this time of the year is really directed towards single women in hetero situations right heteronormative where it's like you don't have a man you don't have a husband and i would argue that Everybody needs self-love, right? Not just this one small snippet of society. Old people, young people, single, attached, male, female, non-binary, everyone, whether you're in a situationship, whether you're married, whether you're, you never want to be with somebody, we all can use a healthy dose of self-love. But really the question for that is like, what really is self-love? In an essence, self-love is really accepting and celebrating who you are as a unique human, right? It's saying like, I am enough. Everything about me is, you know, great. I accept it. I'm celebrating it. I'm proud of it. But before you're able to do that, you have to be able to witness yourself, right? Through a lens of honesty, a lens of transparency and clarity. And that's why at the beginning I was saying, well, when was the last time you asked yourself, who are you? And when did you last ask yourself who you really are through your own lens, not through the lens of your family or the lens of society or the lens of who you used to be when you were in college, university, high school, or heck, even like last week. When was the last time you actually took a minute to look at yourself and say, who am I right now? Because we have to be able to witness ourselves. Like I said, through that lens of honesty, transparency, clarity, that's rooted in the nowness. I'm going to make up a word. I don't know if nowness is a word, but it is now. <laughs> you have to be rooted in the nowness with transparency and clarity to see who am I right now? Because if you're not seeing who you are, all the multifacets, all the little slices of your unique personality and your experience that make up who you are, how the heck can you begin to accept and love and celebrate that? So what this requires is like, we have to wipe away all the expectations. We have to wipe away the thoughts of habits. And like I said, we have to see ourselves for who we are today, not who we want to be, not who we wish to be or who we used to be or who our parents or society used to want us to be or want us to be in the future. We have to be standing in a moment of who we are right now because we are as we are in this moment because that's where we're supposed to be. It's enough. It's good. It's unique and diverse and you're always changing. That's the other thing. And what if you're thinking like, oh, I don't like who I am right now. You are always changing. You are completely different than you were like 30 seconds ago. Your gut is moving around, your blood's moving around. You're never in the same space. And that's why I love to do this identity burst project that we're gonna do at various times in our life. Nothing that we ever do here is like a do it once and that's it. Like this is something that you can come back to again and again, because like I said, our identity is always changing. We're always shape shifting as we learn new things, right? As we pass through challenges or heartaches, as we experience pain and celebration and milestones, we progress, we shift, we change the way we think about things, the things we experience, how we form our expectations. It's always changing. And you will only ever be who you are right now, like right now in this exact moment. You do this reflection tomorrow and you do this um, this art prompt tomorrow, you're gonna see a new you. So it's something that I recommend we can do again and again. Maybe it's something to start the year off with and then reflect at the end of the year, who are you? In fact, if you're able to do this twice over a period of time or like annually, it creates a nice, mile marker or a portrait of yourself almost right it is a portrait of yourself through words through abstract 
symbols, through colors, through the magic of art. So what I want you to do is grab some magazines, grab some flyers, mail clippings, birthday cards, old greeting cards, whatever you can get your hands on that has written words on this. Take some time to go through your home, ask your neighbors, ask your mom like I do. <laughs> I always go, mom, do you have any magazines for me? Then <laughs> She gives them to me. Go to the thrift store. That's another place to get things. You can get really cool books sometimes for like $4 and you have pages and pages of stuff. You're going to flip through these pages and you're going to see what grabs your eye. You're looking for labels, okay? Words, phrases, descriptors, all elements of the written word and language that witness who you are in this exact moment. And as you notice them, you're going to collect them. You're going to cut them out and you want to aim for at least 10 phrases. If you found more, that's great. Grab them all. You can call them later, but anything that makes you stop and look at it and go, oh, okay, that kind of feels like me, pick it up. And as you flip through these magazines and these books and you're looking at the text in front of you, I just want you to be aware of your inner dialogue, okay? I don't want you to think about it. I don't want you to be like, why am I saying that? Why did this happen? I just want you to notice, okay? We're talking about witnessing ourself and our identity. And part of that is like witnessing our thoughts. So I want you to witness what is going on in your brain as you are collecting these words. Notice what you skip past. Notice what you collect, which ones are like immediate yeses and what words you're skipping past. Notice if something catches your eye and you're like, meh, I don't need it. And just start to look for patterns. We're not necessarily gonna go like, is this something that I'm embarrassed by? Is this something that brings me shame or pain? Like we don't wanna get into the why of what we're disregarding, but I just want you to notice what you're disregarding. If you find you're skipping over phrases and words because you're not comfortable with using those or you're not, it's not a part of yourself that you're really uh, not necessarily connected with, but maybe it's a part of yourself that you haven't really accepted yet or something that just makes you feel embarrassed or shameful or you feel bad, like you got the word bossy and you're like, oh hell yes, I'm bossy, but I'm not putting that on my son first. If you find that that's something you're going through as you're working on this, we're gonna be diving into that on an upcoming episode. We're gonna be talking about learning to love and accept all of the parts of yourself through something called shadow work. So this is your reminder here to subscribe so that you'll get that episode when it comes out because it is another very important part of self-love. Yes, we need to witness ourselves and part of witnessing ourselves is witnessing all of ourselves, even the parts that make us feel icky. But for this week, we're just collecting the parts that we feel proud of and that we feel confident in using in our art to create a representation of who we are. So let's talk a little bit about this idea of self-love and the act of beginning to witness yourself. We'll come back to it again later on, but I want us to just touch on this as we're working on our piece here. Because often when we're in times of stress or heartache or disengagement, you know, at the worst end of it, apathy, we just feel like we're like knee deep in the crap of life. What our brain does is something called disassociation. And that means we check out, like we're there, we're present, we're kind of on autopilot, but we're not consciously in the moments that we're in. And we do things like doom scrolling. We watch a lot of Netflix. We do things that remove our awareness from ourself. And we go into a zone of where we're like semi inaccessible. Um, a lot of habits of like, Drinking can come into that place, even eating, you know, some people will be like, I ate a whole box of popcorn, I don't know where that hat, like where it went, you just sort of check out. That's the idea of disassociation. It does serve a purpose, like it tries to keep us safe, right? Your brain is, you always gotta think of your brain as like a central command station, and it's like, I, I gotta keep this person alive, I gotta keep them good and healthy and have nothing that's going to, you know, put them in a state where they may not be functioning at optimal space, but, the problem with this is sometimes it goes a little AWOL and it does things that aren't necessarily helpful. So like with disassociation, it is serving a purpose. It's trying to keep you safe because it doesn't want you to be present and participating and remembering events that might be traumatic or harmful and that are going to cause pain and problems for you later on down the road. But it applies this to things that aren't necessarily as threatening as our brain perceives them to be, right? This is supposed to operate in life and death scenarios. And sometimes this can be like, it can kick into action with like, 
I am feeling a little bit of shame about what happened today when I was at work or something I said to a friend and my brain's like, oh, this is dangerous because your friend's going to stop talking to you. You're going to be kicked out of the group. You know, you're going to be alone in the wilderness by yourself. So let's like not go there. And so what it does is it helps you and I'm saying helps in air quotes. It helps you do that by unplugging so that you're not present in that moment and it becomes a habit right because what happens is as you numb out especially if you're numbing out and distracting yourself with things that are addictive or rewarding like social content and our phones which are completely created to be rewarding they're like little slot machines it like triggers that reward center in your brain and your brain's like i'm gonna do this again whether you need it or not right and it becomes this habit of disassociation and it causes us to numb out and check out and it disconnects us from our true energy source like our feelings our experience of life in this moment yes like i said it disconnects you from stress anger sadness and things that are uncomfortable but it unplugs that essential connection between you and yourself the act of being present and if you're not rooted and aware in the moment that you're in how can you get to know who you are do you see what I'm saying? If you're completely checked out and you're just in the world of your phone or whatever, how can you really truly know what you're feeling or what you're thinking? Because you're there, but you're not engaged with what's happening. And when people tell me that they don't know who they are or what they want in their life or what they like, or they know like they couldn't describe fundamental elements that make up their personality, it tells me one thing. It tells me that they are tuned out and unplugged from their own energy source and their own experience of life. And we're gonna talk about how to reconnect with yourself more later. But before we get into this, let's dive into what is happening right now and the directive of this art journaling session. For this, I want you to remember that you are the light. You're a life force and you have energy within you. Things that are literally like waiting to come out and be expressed. Your personality, your preferences, your hopes, your dreams, all of those things are inside you, whether you're connected to them or not. And they just, they're ready to burst out like a sunburst. You have so much power and presence, more than you probably realize. And what we're going to do today is bear witness to all the aspects that make up you and your unique expression in this life. So we're going to take all these words that you've collected and we're going to arrange them around a focal point. We're going to make a power center, kind of like the core of your being. If you think of yourself as like an atom, let's go like science, science center, science experiment here and think of like the middle, the nucleus. There is a power center in the middle of our page where we're going to write the words I am. And so to do that, just create a medium sized circle right in the middle of your page and fill it. Write the words I am. Write it bold, you know, use capital letters, big, thick markers, make it something so it is that focal point because this is going to be the power center from which everything's going to radiate outwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a collage that radiates outwards going around this power center that features different colors, patterns, images, and words that represent who you are today. You are the light of your life. Let's get that onto paper. There's no rules. There's no restrictions. If you want to color your sections with markers, you want to flood them with paint or collage them with like images for, that are important to you, like you do you. This is your space to create, again, like we said, intuitively without thinking. Just fill the space with what you feel called to fill it with. The most important thing to do is create space, create some wedges of space coming out of your power center, almost like slices of pie, right? You can think of it as a sunburst, you can think of it as a pie or a pizza, whatever works for you. You've got the center circle that says I am, and then we have these lines radiating out of it to create eight to 10 different wedges of space that go around your power center. Again, I am just your guide. You want to make 12? Go for it. You want to make 20? Go for it. But let's at least try to have eight or 10 going around there so that we have the opportunity to look at who we are in depth and look at the multifaceted elements that make up who you are. That means all the cool things that make up who you are. We don't want to just pick three. This is about self-love, so we want to get lots of elements in there. But we don't want to crowd our space. We don't want to crowd this page so much or create the expectation that you have to find so many words and phrases and stress yourself out. That's not the point here. What you're going to do, like I said, is create those wedges of space, those radiating, you know, pies, uh, pie slices coming out of your power center and 
we're going to hold elements of you that you want to witness and honor today. And we're going to fill each space with a background, whether it's painting, collaging, pictures, whatever. And then we're going to choose a word to anchor in the middle of that slice of your life. So as you're working away on that, let's go back to the concept of how do you step out of that habit of disassociating and how do you begin to witness you and your life? Like how the heck do you do that? Because I guarantee you, most of us really have a strong habit of disassociating. We are like little computers, right? We, our brains are fascinating. Our brains are fantastically powerful, but they like to do things to streamline as well. And so a lot of that is automating our behaviors. We get into habits and patterns and we do things without thinking about them. So what we need to do is we need to build new habits. We need to build new neural pathways. That means literally roads in our brain from one part of our brain to the other, because we have roads that are already woven and worn into our head of distraction, of checking out, of disconnecting, and they're well worn in our head because we, like I said, we've been doing it for a long time. And so changing a habit is going to take practice, right? It's not going to be like, I do this once and oh, I'm fixed, right? No, if you're building a habit, it's a practice. Building a practice takes practice. Anyone who has like said, I'm going to start exercising. I guarantee you didn't just go out for a run one day. And then all of a sudden you were disciplined and ready to run every single day. It takes practice because you literally need to override the wiring and systems in your brain that you have been relying on for so long. So when we're doing this, when we're trying to establish a new habit, I always find that taking a multi pronged approach to it, meaning like approaching it and attacking it from various angles will work the best because it gives you opportunity to interact with the same concept in different ways through different modalities, whether it's like physical, verbal, artistic, whatever you're going to activate different parts of your brain and you're going to repeat it. And that is part of the key is repetition right? So bonus, if you can have some fun while you're trying to build a new habit, that's going to trigger that reward center in your brain and make you more likely to do it again. This is where art making comes in. So there's lots of ways to check in and connect with yourself. Like I was saying, the key is finding ones that work for you because we want to build a habit of being present, of being connected to ourselves and being able to witness our life. And we're going to be building a relationship between your brain and your body. We have to reconnect what's disconnected. We need to reconnect with who we are, where we are and what our body is doing and feeling in the present moment. And there's lots of options. Like I said, there are lots of options and ways that you can do this. There are tons of resources on the internet. If you Google things like mindful awareness, how to be present, just go for a Google, like give yourself a time limit so you don't fall into a black hole and disassociate for a long time. But there's tons out there. And like I said, there's meditation, there's yoga, there's walking, there's even walking meditations, which is one of my favorite things to do. There's all different things out there that you can put into practice to help reconnect yourself with yourself. But I'm going to talk about a few of my favorites that I use on a weekly basis to remain connected to myself. Number one is breath work. I have a breath work practice that literally saved my life. I took on a 30 day breath work challenge about a year ago because I was in such bad fright or flight from having a history of PTSD and just some challenges that life was throwing at me. It was, I was really checked out and really disassociated. And this 30 day breath work challenge took me from being present physically, but like my brain was in a different space to being completely in the moment. I have no other way to describe it other than like, I literally felt like I had a new brain and a new lens to view the world from. It's like I had a new computer in my head and a new camera in front of my eyes. Breath work, meditation, things that sort of get you out of your head and into your body, right? I believe it's the first step to reconnecting with yourself. I like that I could go on and on with this for like, weeks if we wanted to talk about it because it has been so life-changing for me but it is an area of expertise of some practitioners not mine so perhaps we could do an episode on this in the future if you're interested just let me know but I started with something called stacked breathing I did that every day for 30 days it was 30 minutes a day it was like hell on earth as I was doing it because it was so hard to sit with myself but when I got through it it was like like I said a brand new day like I'd hit a refresh on my head now I do something much smaller I do five to ten minutes a day of something called four seven eight breathing in for four hold for seven out for eight while doing some visualizations that help me but 
That is just two of many, many ways that you can incorporate breath work. Second thing I do is journaling. Okay, journaling, there's a lot of names for it. You can do a brain dump. It can be like stream of consciousness writing. It can be intuitive writing where you like just sit down with your eyes closed and you tap on your computer, like you type it out. You just let the pen fly or the keys fly and you have no expectations. That's a great way to tap into your subconscious mind and just see what words are there. Sometimes you feel weird because you'll be writing like, I don't know what to write, I don't know what to do, da, 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 da. and you'll find that words start coming out as you begin to talk to yourself. Uh, Julia Cameron, the author of a book called The Artist's Way, she suggests a habit of writing three pages every day for anyone who wants to connect with their inner self and establish a conversation with the artist within them. Some people like to do it like that. Some people like to do it as a journal with prompts. You know, I collect prompts, some of the programs that I participate in for uh, mindfulness and thought work have journal prompts and I find that those can be helpful as well. Thought prompts are really just questions that guide our attention and thinking into a specific area because sometimes like a blank page is too much. So I dip in and out of how I go with this. Like sometimes I do the stream of consciousness writing. Sometimes I work with a prompt and I just go with what I need in the day. And I'm able to do that to know what I need because I've been doing breath work, meditation, journaling. I've been doing these reconnecting exercises for several years now. And I have a fairly good awareness or I can at least stop a loop very quickly if I'm getting into loop and I can step back and go, okay, I need this. Let's do this one. Um, but when you're starting out, you won't know. You won't know what you need. And you know what? You just get to try everything. And there's a lot of fun and novelty and freedom in beginning, being a beginner at something, right? So we've done, we've talked about breath work and journaling. The last one I want to talk about is art and art like we're doing today. Art without expectations or rules. Exactly like we're doing today or abstract art or doodling or journaling, collaging, whatever. That is such a great way to connect with yourself and begin to understand preferences, likes, thoughts. Somebody once said, and I I literally do not remember who said this, so apologies for quoting without being able to quote the source, but um, art is just making a series of decisions. It's like one decision after another. Do I want to use red or blue? Does this go here or there? Do I like this shape or that shape? What happens if I move this here? It's just question, response, question, response. And they're not open-ended questions where it's like, why do I believe that this looks better over here? No, it's like, does this go here or here? Those are closed ended questions where it's an either or response for you that needs to come out of it. And that is literally what making art is. It's asking yourself a series of closed ended questions and taking a decision or making a decision to take action to move to the next step. It's like one after another. And you get into this practice of asking questions, responding, doing the action. And as you do that, you establish a connection with like your own internal guidance system, the one that just answers first and then thinks. It's this act of like ask, respond, ask, respond that gets the answers from a truly authentic voice that's inside of you. It's one that knows like what its preferences, habits, interests are, it doesn't care what the, what they saw yesterday or what their teacher said they needed to do or what their boss said about what they created last week. And it doesn't matter if this art making that you're doing is paint or photography or collage or doodling. What matters is it's this act of making something that comes from a series of ideas, questions, responses, and actions that are already within you. And that's why I love this concept of art journaling, right? Because it combines the last two. It combines the concept of like writing, free writing and journaling with art making. And if you want to get into a habit, you want to pull them all together, like give yourself a five minute meditation or breath work before you do the art making. That's what I like to do. And if you listen to some of the other episodes on this channel, you'll notice that some of the intuitive art making sessions are auditory right they're just things to listen to but we always start with like a meditation breath work checking in point right reconnecting before we do it because you can put them all together like I was saying and so like what we're doing here today is a bit of both right it's a bit of all this we're creating art today that witnesses our state our life and our being and it's honoring who we are by turning these characteristics into like a legit physical thing you're a piece of art 
we're going to also have the opportunity to do some further reflection on this piece of art that we made at the end of the session when we take a look at what we made and we ask ourselves some open-ended questions. Remember I talked about you're going close questions while you're making yes no this or that and at the end we do the open-ended don't do open-ended questions as you're creating something because that's when your brain takes over and your mind takes over and you're going to stop creating from this like subconscious intuitive source so as you're working on creating your identity burst act first think second and like i said ask yourself those simple questions to guide your art making do i want this color or that color is this a yes or a no? Does this word go here or does it go over there? And save that deeper why and how questioning that like navel gazing introspection where you're like contemplating the intricacies of the universe. <laughs> save that for later as we come together at the end. Right now, all we wanna do is begin to intuitively collect words and phrases and connect them with symbols and colors and images that connect us with our inner identity. Today, we are just looking at the who and the what of our lives that we wanna shine a light on, to be proud of and say, you know, this is me, this matters, I matter, I am here. And keep working on this as long as you need to. Keep arranging your colors, your pieces of paper, your paint, your words. Keep arranging them around your power center, your I am circle in the middle of your page for as long as you need to. You can pause this audio or this video right here to create as much space for yourself to make what you feel called to make. And when you're done, I want you to come back and we're going to have a look at what was inside us and what you created to witness yourself today. So now that you've finished making your power center, your self-identity sunburst, whatever you wanted to call it, now that you're done and I hope you stayed the course and you avoided those like big existential questions of why am I doing this? What does this mean to me? And I hope you really reined it in and stuck with the red or blue, here or there, yes or no. That's how you build the intuitive art making process and how you connect with that voice inside of you. Like I said, that internal guidance system that answers first and then thinks afterwards. It's that really like those intuitive blurts. And if you did that, you hopefully created a piece of art that has your power center statement in the middle, I am, and then has all these slices of life or slices of personality radiating outwards that represent who you are. And you have your words, and hopefully you paired them with some backgrounds or some you know, other papers or colors or art processes that you felt called to do. This is when you can take it and you can take it a step further and you can do some of that written journaling that we talked about. I like to keep a page empty on the other side to answer these questions. Um, I've also used a separate journal for writing. It's up to you whether you want to continue the process in your book, in your art journal, or if you want to go put it somewhere else. Some people like to put it in like a vault notebook that they're like, I'm never seeing this again. It's totally up to you. Some things to consider and some questions to consider if you want to take this a step further and self-reflect. Ask yourself which words were an immediate yes, which ones were an immediate no, and which ones were in that like back and forth zone where you, you could have used them, but you decided not to. And why do you think that is? There are no rules when it comes to the self-reflective aspect of journaling after you do the artistic activity. The only thing I will say is that it's a really important step, so don't skip it because the abstraction of the ideas where you made the images and you put it around, that's sort of like your subconscious coming out. Writing as well will connect with your subconscious. This gives you the opportunity to connect dots between some of the themes and things that came across in your art, to look at it from a different lens, to make connections, and to really like solidify some of these concepts that you have brought out today into your art. Like we said, this is all about celebrating you and this is all about self-love and witnessing who you are right now in your magic, wonderful, beautiful life and saying, I'm a badass, I'm amazing, this is wonderful, this is me, this is what matters, I'm here, I matter. And that is the first step to building self-love and self-celebration, that critical element of witnessing the self. I hope it shone a light on all of the aspects that make up you and your wonderful life. If you enjoyed this week's art journal activity, remember to give us a thumbs up to like it and please share this content with people in your life that you know would appreciate it and enjoy it. Pass the word along and 
stick around because we've got more art journaling activities coming every single week that are going to help you celebrate yourself, build your self-identity, self-esteem, and explore and have fun. There's so many things. It comes every week. You might as well subscribe. There's your reminder. <laughs> All right. I'll see you next week. And until then, make something great.